I want to reveal one of the probably my best kept secrets in photography and cinematography, which is macro lenses. Bam. Go. <laughs> Macro lenses. The biggest misconception is the name, macro. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, I don't take close-up shots of bugs or blades of grass or tiny plants. I don't do close-ups. Ooh, I should maybe get some close-ups of this. Oh, it's plastic. It's all fake. So when it comes to this particular lens, uh, as you know, I'm a Panasonic shooter. So Lumix, their macro lenses, this is the 45mm f2.8 image stabilized macro lens. Now the 45 mil, the equivalent of a full frame uh, focal length would be 90 mils. So it's a telephoto lens. Versatility of this lens is remarkable. It has so many different uses besides just macro shots. But talking about macro photography just for a moment, if you haven't played around with macro photos or video, you definitely should. It is fascinating being able to get the close up details of someone's eye, the real true colors of someone's eye or a photo of a snowflake. Ho ho! You are missing out. Play around with it, it is so much fun with macro photography and video. Now, the versatility of this lens. This lens has probably given me my most, my favorite portraits I've ever taken came out of this lens. This has, this lens with the compressed background, this is an f2.8, really fast, image stabilized, amazing for video, get some killer b-roll, and even just storytelling, being able to compress the background and capture a scene, what you can do with this lens is incredible. As for photos, this lens is so versatile. You don't just have to do macro shots with this lens. What it can do though is some incredible landscape shots because the equivalent of this is a 90 mil. This is a prime lens, so this technically is a telephoto lens. The focal length on it isn't very wide. It's very narrow and it has that, it has that compression in it, so it brings everything that's in the distance that much closer in the frame. It has the ability that you can get some really creative landscape shots with this lens. My absolute favorite, as you guys know, my favorite style of photos is portrait photography. What I can do with this lens is basically what a person can do with a 70 to 200. This is my little go-to 70 to 200. This is my telephoto lens. And it's also a macro. The versatility that I have with this lens is incredible. What I can do with this, it saves me from buying three different lenses. I can get all the things I want with just this one lens. So it's good for macro shots. It's amazing for B-roll and cinematography, storytelling, the compression of the background, lovely, beautiful bokeh in this lens. For portraits, oh ho ho, baby. This is why this lens has created some of the best portraits. Some of my most favorite portraits I've ever taken came out of this lens because of what it can do. I can have the subject and in the foreground, it can have nice blurred out, out of focus elements in the foreground then my subject and then the background is also compressed, bringing that so much closer. If you had a portrait session in the mountains, you could have the mountains look like they're right there, right behind the model and something in front like blades of grass or a bush or trees or something or whatever. You could have that blurred out foreground. Your subject is nice, crisp and sharp, beautiful. And then you have a nice blurred out background. The portraits and the capabilities of this lens are highly underestimated. Now this lens, this particular lens, runs you for around $1,200 to $1,400 depending on where you are. And this lens is image stabilized. Uh, there are cheaper versions of this lens. You could also, Panasonic, I believe they also make the 42.5 mil, but it's not image stabilized. That's the only downside. That's why this lens costs so much. Plus this one is weather sealed. And throwing it in the backpack, I'm going to some pretty extreme places. I kind of want to make sure that it's not going to break on me. And you've heard me say it before on this channel, with shooting with mirrorless cameras, with me being a Panasonic shooter, the one reason why I love the Lumix cameras and their lenses is the footprint. Look at the size of this lens. It's smaller than my fist. This is incredible. I love the footprint size. It fits in my camera bag. I don't have to worry about it taking up a lot of space. It doesn't weigh that much. And what I get out of this, this, it's like a little hand grenade. This little lens is like a little hand grenade Hoo hoo, look out when this baby comes out of my backpack because damn, you can get some cool shit with this. Love this lens. Great investment. 
that's it guys. That's us talking about macro lenses. Highly recommend you guys get out there and start experimenting a little bit. Go out and rent a, you don't have to go out and buy these lenses. If you want, you could go out and just rent one for the weekend, play around with it and see if it's something that interests you. You can get some pretty incredible portraits, like I said, even just doing macro photography, product photography, food photography, landscapes. Go out, I challenge you to go out and rent a macro lens and just see what you can do with it with your camera. You'd be amazed at how creative you can get with one of these in your arsenal. All right, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. You guys know what to do. Smash that thumbs up button if you like this video. Share it with your other photography friends if you want. And don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. I don't think that covered.